Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trustees Vintage Live Sale, the 4S1S edition. As you can see, we've got four sellers, but it's one sale. So thanks for joining tonight. I uh, appreciate everyone who signed on. It's several people signed on early. Hey, so you want to know how we built a That teaches me. I got to change up, change my uh, microphone there or my speakers. Um, appreciate those of you who signed on. That's, hopefully that means some of you are excited for tonight's sale. I uh, got a couple new faces in my 4S, 1S uh, family tonight. So in this evening's uh, sale, we've got Beth from Carolina Princess Sweet Treats and Pretties. Hey, y'all. Uh, Katie from Vintage and Vinyl. Hello, hello. And we've got Aaron from the collection vintage thrift, uh, what was the rest of it? Gentle Thrifting Mama or something like that. My old channel name was Gentle Thrifting Mama, but there I'm the go. collection vintage now. There you go. So collection vision, we got Aaron. Uh, so welcome to, uh, definitely welcome to my guests and then welcome to all of you who are joining in as well. Uh, watching, uh, seeing some of the, the, some new names were popping in. First, we got some, some standards. Side Street Market uh, wel is welcome back. Halem is back. So that means Melody must be lurking in a corner somewhere. Angela Marksbury representing another uh, Illinois resident. And there's Melody. Hi, Melody. And we've got Miss Bev. You might be a new name for me. So if you are, welcome. Hope you enjoy your time on the channel tonight. Diana, Little Vintage Me, definitely uh, check her out. She just did her first uh, premiere video, I think it was last week, uh, as a haul. So I'm not sure if she's going to start doing sales or not. But uh, welcome, Diana. Uh, thanks for coming back. Michelle from Newton's Cupboard is back. She does some live sales. I'm Anybody who does live sales, go ahead and drop, you can drop information in the chat. I have no problem if you want to self-promote. I lose track. So uh, Angela Marksbury, I think it was one of the people I said hi to. She does a calendar, um, but it's getting harder and harder to keep that calendar up to date. So uh, if you've got a, got a channel and you're here tonight, go ahead and promote your channel. Uh, we've got uh, Judy. Welcome back, Judy. We've got Dawn from Just One More Docks and Rescue. Thanks for coming back. I hope uh, Nikki, your newest rescue, is doing well, the Docks and Shih Tzu mix. Uh, Barb coming in from Winking Owl Antiques. She's got another another channel that would be joining uh, Jeffrey, Real Nifty Vintage. Join them on Friday evenings. I think they're going on at 7.30 Eastern now. Carrie from Austin, Texas is in the house. Oh, God, it just sounded like Tim there. I don't know where there that came from. But um, Vintage Vinny's back representing the state of Maryland. Uh, I think it's said hi, Judy. We've got Karen's joining us again. Mama Jay's back. Uh, Rebecca Higgins is back representing the state of Maine. Nate representing the entire country of New Zealand. Uh, let's see. Where were the new names? I think there are a couple of people that signed on really early and I've got to like scroll all the way back up because I don't want to miss them. Uh, Larry Riley, I think uh, that is a new name to me. So welcome, uh, Larry. Thanks for joining us. And yeah, Nate giving us the countdown. Uh, I'm afraid to scroll too far up. Uh, Janice is back. Welcome back, Janice. Linda is back. Oh, there's one of them. Time Traveler Antiques. That was one I wasn't familiar with. I think, uh, Katie, you said you knew that. You knew her. Yes, that's Chanel. Welcome Chanel. Okay. It's always it's always nice where we can match the names to the channels. Uh, so welcome. Welcome to my channel, it's Chanel. Hope you enjoy it tonight. And uh, I think that went backwards. Head back to the bottom. All right. The pretty much the rules for tonight: uh, vintage cat and paws, wonder, uh, wanderlust vintage. Uh, welcome. Um, pretty much the channels. If you're either if you're new to me, you probably are familiar with the way the different live sales are happening in other channels. Uh, pretty much they all work the same way. The biggest difference will be on my uh, on my channel. We do not do. Um, oh, thanks, Tina. We don't do auctions. So the only difference is you do need to pay attention to the price that we're offering uh, because it will be first to claim. So a little bit of housekeeping on this. Uh, we will each be going round robin. We will each be giving one item. Uh, we will show you the item. We will give you the price and then we will give you the item number. The first person to type that number into their live chat and be seen by Nate, Soul Nate in uh, New Zealand. Uh, so the internet has to work overtime today. Uh, Nate is going to be tracking for all four of us because he's that amazing of a human being. Uh, so he will be monitoring who was the first person in the chat. You will be the person that claims it. If at any point you see a number scrolling by before you hear the seller say that number, you are buffering. You may not think you're buffering, but trust me, you're buffering. So you want to refresh your screen, refresh your phone, go back out of YouTube, put it back in. 
if you do that often enough in between each item, you even if your internet's not the fastest, you have just as good of a chance as anybody else uh, in getting that item. So uh, if you don't get to be the first person, don't get frustrated. None of us are curing cancer. You know, we just have some fun stuff and we hope everyone's here to have fun. And even if you're not buying, you're new to the channel, you've you've become uh, unofficial huckster hecklers. Uh, you don't really have to live up to that name, but I love my huckster hecklers and uh, have some fun in the chat, which is going really fast. And I keep seeing new names popping up. And uh, so Maria, welcome back. J and M, I think that's another new one uh, that I do not know. So thank Those you. Those are my me. kids. Oh, excellent. Well, well, <laughs> they're, they're still welcome to. Uh, June might be a new name that I don't recognize. Sometimes people change their names, and so I always wonder. Oh, uh, Vintage Uprising Texas, excellent. She just started doing live sales on Mondays? Wednesdays. Wednesdays, Wednesdays at uh, 8 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. I, I only knew it because it's it, there's so many things that bump up against each other. I knew that I was watching two screens at the same time, and I couldn't remember what else I was watching. So I was it was either a Monday or a Wednesday because I was watching George. So uh, welcome, uh, welcome, uh, Vintage Uprising Texas. So uh, oh, and Jamie's here. Gritty Gret is back. So again, I I apologize if I've missed anybody. Uh, it's great that this early on we've got so many people. Um, so I apologize if I've missed you, but we will try and uh, say hi to you throughout the throughout the evening. So again, be the first person to claim. You will claim the item. Nate will be putting that into the chat. We will try and say it out loud if we can. Uh, there will probably be a full round before each person can announce their piece. And the only other uh, piece of information is just like all the other sellers, we our prices will not include shipping. Uh, but the unique aspect of that is we also cannot combine for shipping. Um, uh, uh, sweet treats and pretties carolina princess is coming out of texas because she's just going to mess up with us with her name uh, <laughs> carolina princess out of texas uh, so she is shipping from texas uh, katie is shipping from florida aaron is shipping from ontario canada and i am shipping from outside chicago illinois so we cannot combine because we are nowhere near each other so just keep that in mind as you're doing purchases wherever you're located around the country that is where each seller is shipping from. So take that into consideration as we will then invoice you for the item that you purchased plus the shipping cost it will send, take to get to you. Uh, so again, welcome uh, to the channel. Hope you all have some fun tonight. Welcome Auntie Christy. I don't think I said hi to you. Uh, Groovy Vintage, I think I missed you. So, and Vintage Roots, Laurie Ann, thanks for joining in. And I think we're ready to go. So kicking us off, starting out is the Carolina Princess from Texas, Beth. Thank you so much. Patrick, thanks for letting me come back on another one of your sales. I'm going to start off with just a little figurine today. It's getting close to Easter, but not quite there. But I've got a little girl figurine. She's got a beautiful little face with a tambourine. And then I just love the expression of this rabbit down here in awe of her. But this little figurine is six and a half inches. There are no chips or cracks in her hat and all her fingers and tambourine and everything is there. So I thought she was really super cute. And this little figurine is $8 and it is number 53. $8 number 53. Well, hello everyone tonight. Thanks Patrick for having me on again. I'm so honored to be selling with these great group of folks. The first thing that I have up for you tonight is coming from my own personal collection and I'm passing it on to you guys. I love grapes and this is a Hazel Atlas grape milk glass dish. You could use this for anything you wanted, but it's a candy dish. It does have the ring of fire. It is older milk glass. It's a little hard to see that ring of fire on camera. You can see it a little bit there. Absolutely perfect condition. No issues, chips or cracks. Wonderful little piece and a vignette. And you can have this Hazel Atlas milk glass candy dish for only $10 if you give me the letter 29. 29, $10 for the milk glass candy dish. Okay, I'm up. Hi, everyone. Sorry if I missed anyone in the chat. I was trying to type out some people. Thank you, Patrick, for having me on tonight. So the first thing I am going uh, to be selling tonight is this uh, pottery flower frog. It's got many, many holes on there. And it's basically just a studio piece. So the person who made it, um, their name is Ludovic Salins. You can see that there. 
I don't know if you guys can see that. I think you can. Anyway, it's a beautiful sort of like earthy color with the blue on there over. You can see a little bit of the uh, ceramic color there underneath. So I'm asking uh, $10 for this. And the number for this one here is number four. So number four, $10 for the um, pottery. Uh, sorry, I'm new with this. There we go. <laughs> the pottery flower frog. Excellent. Uh, so starting things out, I am going to go ahead and start off for all the early birds. I'm going to have my mystery box. So mystery boxes, I think a couple people on the sale tonight are going to have mystery boxes. Uh, I am doing mine slightly differently. Mystery boxes are were kind of created, if you're not familiar with them, uh, in the vintage community by Fatbird Finds. And they're really fun. They're very popular. And by far, they're the most popular item I've ever had in my sales. So one of the things I started doing, I do feel if you do a lot of refresh, your internet can give you a fighting chance against everybody else. But I did start doing something a little bit differently for the mystery boxes just because I want them to be more fun. So all of my mystery boxes are the same price. They're $15. Um, I have learned not to pre-pack them because I had a heavy one that ended up having to go to California and it was too much. So we we don't know what's in there. It'll be based on how, uh, how far I'm shipping it. But it is $15. But instead of giving you the number right out of the gate, what I'm going to make you do is guess. So I'm going to give you the range. I'm going to give you a range of numbers that this mystery box falls into. If you're interested in the box, you have just as fighting chance of anybody else because you all got to guess the number. You can put a number in and you can just keep putting numbers in. Just put every number you think, but put your number, hit enter, put your number, hit enter. You can't just do a string of numbers. So the first time I see the number, I will announce what it is. Nate will refresh his chat and we will verify uh, who the actual winner of the mystery box is on the next round. So we're starting out with a mystery box and the number for the mystery box falls between 90 and 100. The number is between 90 and 100. So type in a uh, number and the first first person I see that types it in, people didn't weren't waiting for the range. So some people are just typing away. So <laughs> congratulations, but no, we get it yet. Uh, and pretty much right out of the gate, uh, I've got, I see the number. So the number is 92, and uh, I will wait until the next round to actually announce who gets it, but I think I know, but we will let Nate verify and pass it on to Beth. Okie dokie. The next item that I have is just a little commemorative Disney item, um, and I actually picked this up. It's, it is a McDonald's commemorative item. Um, it's got all the little Disney characters. Let me get really close in there. So we have Bambi and Tinkerbell and Pinocchio. It's got great colors um, in this. It's got the Chip and Dale and all of those. There's no chips or cracks in this whatsoever. And it is where you look through the bottom. Let me see if we can do it this way. But if you look through, there we go. This way, you will see that it has 100 here. Um, and it's just a commemorative glass. And originally, when I picked up, I was thinking about, I had seen someone in the shop where Patrick has his things of making this into a candle. Um, but we all know I should not probably be around hot wax by myself. So I am going to offer this up tonight for only $5 and it is number 67. $5 number 67. up. Congratulations to Karen Dondelinger. You are picking up that milk glass dish. Next up, I have a beautiful red candy dish. This is coming again from my personal collection. You can have a little piece of vintage and vinyl. And I love this. Now, this is Fostoria coin, but it's technically L.E. Smith because Fostoria at this point, when this candy dish was made, had closed, sold the molds, and L.E. Smith not Ellie Smith, Lancaster Colony started making coin glass out of the molds from Fostoria. So this is Ellie Smith coin from probably about 1970. The coins are acid wash, not acid wash like original coin. They are frosted. Uh, they're a little more frosted. So these would have been sandblasted, not acid wash, but absolutely gorgeous blood red candy dish. Nothing wrong with it at all. Just lovely. This candy dish is heavy. I just want to let you guys know that. It is about three pounds and about nine inches tall, but just stunning in a vignette or a display or to actually put your cashews or candy in it. So I love this piece. 
and you can have this Lancaster Colony coin blood red candy dish for only $15, $15 by giving me number 31. Okay, I forgot what was next. <laughs> the next thing I have is a set of three books. They're a spotter's guide to, this first one is Shells. The, next, the second one is The Night Sky. And the third one is Birds. They do have their um, dust jackets on them. And then this is what, they look the same underneath. Uh, they are from, I want to say 19, I won't guess. Okay, 1979 by Usborne Publishing Limited, first American edition, and they say printed in Spain. So they're in excellent condition. There are a set of three. I'll just flip through quickly this bird one here because it's got the most stunning um, illustrations. I don't know if you want to use them for actually bird watching or just paper crafting, stuff like that. It's got really, really nice illustrations and then um, they're informative too. So. This is the uh, night sky one, just to give you sort of a, an idea of what's inside. And then this one here is the shells one, and it's got some beautiful illustrations as well. So for the set of three, I am asking uh, $15, and the number is going to be number 15. So $15, number 15 for the set of three books. All right, starting things out, number 92, my mystery box went to Halem uh, Nassif, and he is the person He is the person that I saw in my chat as well. Sometimes it does differ, uh, but I've, I've learned the hard way not to announce somebody else's name because then people get perturbed. So congratulations, Halem. I uh, hope you enjoy the mystery box. Uh, the next item, and this is something that I think a few of us have some uh, mixed lots uh, that we are offering. So this one keeps getting in my way. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of uh, mine. If you've watched my channel in the past, you know that I've had a variety of brick and mortar locations, some, some vintage booths in different malls and locations. Uh, unfortunately, I've not been particularly successful in the environments that I've been in. So I've I'm out of a couple of them and I'm in the process of shutting down the last one that I am in. So as a result, we're going to have a lot of stuff coming into my live sales that are currently on exhibit in my booth. So watch for uh, some booth promotions I'll be doing too. But one of them is this mixed lot of bottles. So what I've got starting out is an old Listerine bottle. So you've got the Listerine and the Lambert, uh, Lambert, yeah, just Lambert pharmacy company is, um, raised in raised glass or uh, raised uh, lettering on the glass. It has a cork stopper. We've got another one with raised glass, a mixing bottle that shows a half cup and a half cup where you add into the lines uh, without a without a topper. So you've got, but it does not have a screw top. So you would have a, a cork on that one as well. We've got a little milk bottle from Farm Fresh, grade A milk. So you got a little pint, so, pint uh, milk bottle. We've got a Pons extract lotion bottle. Again, with the Pons extract is, uh, you can see it's raised, uh, molded into the glass. Also molded in the glass is 1846. I'm sure that is not the age of the bottle. So I'm not sure if that's the model number or what that would have been. And then the last one also has raised glass. It is Heinz Honey and Almond Cream, AS Heinz Company, Bloomfield, New Jersey, USA. That one has a screw top on it. So that one may not be quite as old as some of the others uh, with the threaded top. So it is a set of five bottles. Uh, these bottles had been in my booth and were ranging anywhere from five to $8 each. I am selling all five of the bottles uh, for a total of $15. So it's averaging out to $3 a bottle. So $15 for the lot of five and by giving me number 82. $15, number 82 for the set of five vintage glass bottles. Okie dokie. My next item is a pair of salt and pepper shakers. And I think I've shown these before, but I want to try them in a different setting. But they are about four inches tall and they are from Amsterdam. Now, I'm not going to say they're Delft Blue. Um, it doesn't say that anywhere. They are the same. This is the front and this is the back of each of those. And on the bottom, 
of them. They do both have their stoppers, but it does say um, made in Amsterdam right down here. Um, I'm sorry, made in Holland. I can't read. Made in Holland um, here on both of them, on this end and on this, this one as well, if I can get it to show you. So these Amsterdam salt and pepper shakers are $8, number 72. Congratulations to Miss Bev. You are picking up that wonderful blood red Lancaster Colony Company candy dish. The next item I have for you is some fun jewelry. Now I have a little lot of jewelry here. The first thing you're going to get in this lot is this lovely gold tone brooch. Kind of looks like uh, leaves or flowers. And the neat thing is with this brooch is you can wear it this way or you can turn it around and wear it this way and it would really look good on a lapel or a collar with a black jacket just really classy pin now i do want to point out it has a tiny little spot of wear there nothing big or major i don't believe this one's marked you do have the lobster claw or safety class there beautiful little pin so you'll be getting this and then i'm throwing in these are basically for free you're getting two lovely little pieces of earrings. This one is clip on. Here's the clip and it is prong set, beautiful blue color. And this one is a flower. Now this one is a screw back earring. It does screw together. And these would just be fun for crafting or you could do anything you wanted with them. So you'll be getting those in addition to the brooch. And if you would like this brooch and those fabulous earrings, all you have to do is type in number 34 and they will be $8. $8, number 34 for the fabulous brooch and earrings. Okay, so I forgot to say the first time around, um, the Pottery Flower Frog number four went to Michelle from Comfy Cozy Living. So thank you, Michelle. And then just my last item was the three um, books, the Spotter's Guide books. Those went to Christine from Side Street Market. So thank you as well. So the next item I have is this sweet little girl here. It's a little girl figurine with very sweet eyes. She's got a little green bird on her shoulder here and then green, um, like greenery and flowers and a little green bow in her hair. So I thought she would be good um, for the springtime, for decor, anything like that. She is not marked on the bottom, um, but I suspect she might be from like, I don't know, maybe Taiwan or something like that. So she's not super, super, super old, but vintage nonetheless. And I just thought she, her little face, if I could get it there, it's not focusing that well, but very sweet face with the little eyelashes and the teeny tiny red lips. Um, the gold that she has on her also very good condition. So no chips, no cracks. And for this sweet little girl, I'm asking $10 and the number is going to be number nine. So $10, number nine. All right. Uh, my next item is another one that came out of the booth. Uh, this was picked up at an estate sale as a, well, wasn't, well, I guess you could kind of say they were a set, but it was the estate sale of a local artist, uh, an artist based in Ottawa, Illinois. And she did these canvases in embroidery hoops. So they probably date to around like the 80s and 90s seem to be an, a time when that was pretty popular, you know, maybe going into the 2000s. Unfortunately, they're not dated but they are signed and they are original oils on canvas, stitch embroidery hoop with a metal clamp and the metal twist there on the top. Uh, I had had three of them, the largest of the three sold. Uh, so what I've got left is the smallest one, which is the little uh, school, the Bundy School of Note. So the one room schoolhouse, little red schoolhouse. And the other one is the farm scene with the windmill and the barn. And if you ever wondered what Ottawa, Illinois looks like, there you go. So these two uh, were the smaller sizes. Uh, the third one that was largest did sell. I once upon a time, up until yesterday, had these in my booth at $8 a piece. Uh, they did not sell. So here I'm selling the pair of them for $8. So cutting it in half, $8 gets you both the schoolhouse and the farm with the windmill. $8 by giving me number 96. $8.96 for the Lori Rogers uh, original oil. 
Okay, I'd like to say thank you to Sue Spizio, if I say that correctly. Um, she picked up the little Japan girl with the bunny figurine, and then Miss Rose Spangender Spangenberg picked up the Disney glass that I had. My next item is going to be a cream and sugar set. These are from Japan. It is from the Home Beautiful Collection, and the pattern is Night Magic. So I'll show you that on the bottom first, but it's a little stoneware pattern. Um, this is the creamer here. And then I do have the matching sugar. And it is a rather, it's a big sugar, I think, um, with the double handles. It has no chips or cracks in it. And it has its little lid as well. So for the and sugar set, that is the night magic pattern. It is $12 and number 56. $12, number 56. Congratulations, Karen Bondelinger. I want to thank you. You got the brooch and those fabulous earrings. Now, I have a fun piece here next for you guys. You can have a piece of vintage and vinyl history. I am selling the copper jello mold that I made that jello concoction in. So you can have a real piece of fun vintage and vinyl history. This is a beautiful copper jello mold. It's got the grapes on the front, this lovely texture. It still has its made in Korea sticker. Absolutely perfect condition on the inside. There is a little bit of copper wear up at the top, but that's not too noticeable. And if you really wanted to polish this up, barkeeper's friend would work wonders on that. But I wanted to leave it as it is so the buyer can decide what they want to do. It also has a wonderful hanger, 1930 with the rivet. But this is a fabulous jello mold. This jello mold is eight inches in size, so it's a good size for all your jello concoction meats or just really pretty on a wall in a kitchen with a copper collection. And you can have my jello mold from that live where I tried the jello for only $9, $9 by giving me number 33. Okay, so the little girl figurine went to Amy Cox, so thank you, Amy. The next item I have is a planter. I do love my drip glaze. So <laughs> if you were at my sale on Monday, you would have seen a lot of drip glaze. So I'm bringing in some more. Um, this is a green uh, planter, no uh, maker on the bottom at all. Um, there are no chips, no cracks, beautiful green color, perfect for sort of St. Patrick's Day or anything like that. Um, there is a bit of um, glaze slip is a new term that I learned uh, on the bottom there. So the glaze didn't fully cover um, the um, pottery, but that's okay. It's on the bottom. Nothing else, um, you know, wrong with it. So beautiful piece with a beautiful shape. And uh, I'm asking $12, and the number for that one is going to be number eight. So $12, number eight. All right, and my last item, the pair of embroidery hoop art pieces from Lori Rogers went to Margie Simo, Simo. Uh, that I believe is a new name for me. So again, uh, anyone who is purchasing tonight, particularly if it's your first time, do make sure you're sending an email to the individual uh, seller. Uh, our email addresses are on the screen for all cases, but uh, Aaron's because hers didn't fit. So uh, just make sure you're sending us email. She'll drop her email address in the chat if you claim something as well. So we know where you are and how to bill you for shipping. So thank you, uh, Margie, for picking that up. The next item I have is uh, was a relatively new addition to the booth, and I'd re I had hoped it was going to sell. It did not. So I bring it here. So they are cast, I'm going to guess aluminum. I, they are relatively heavy, uh, but I do believe they are cast aluminum. I do not believe they're, they're not cast iron or anything. Uh, they are cast aluminum Scotty bookends. So you've got this great uh, deco background. Uh, Scotty's are really popular from the deco era because of Fala. Uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt's uh, Scotty Terrier, his Scottish Terrier. So he ended up showing up in a lot of art and a lot of household items uh, in the in that era. Now, there's nothing on these to indicate when they were actually made or who they were made by, but there is definitely some patina and wear on the bottom that these do have some age to them that I would indicate, that seem to indicate these were cast aluminum probably from the 30s. Um, they're beautifully detailed. 
You've got that Deco Chevron uh, going on in the background. Uh, and then you've also got the uh, triangle, again, that Chevron motif running around the, the bottom. The base backgrounds are just flat. Uh, you can see I once had this in my booth for $25. I'm uh, marking it down a little bit, so I'm not paying commission to the shop anymore. Uh, so I'm knocking it down to $18. So $18 for the pair of Scotty bookends, $18 giving me number 84. $18.84 for the Scotty bookends. All right. My next item is a decorative item. Um, I think that it's not only beautiful, but kind of packs a punch for us right now. And it is just a decorative plate of the serenity prayer there um, that just says, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And I think it has some beautiful flowers um, on it. There is not a hanging mechanism already on there um, for that one. It wasn't just put on there, but this serenity prayer plate is going to be $10, number 64, $10, number 64. Congratulations to Belinda Carroll. You are picking up my copper jello mold. Really, thank you so much. Now guys, for the moment you've all been waiting for, and no, not the kangaroo, but I do have the flower frog up for grabs. I know a lot of you guys love these flower frogs, as do I, they are fabulous. Now this little flower frog is one of the smaller ones. It is the pen type. He measures about one and a half inches. Um, really nice, all the tines here are in perfect shape. A little rusty, but that's just to be expected with flower frogs. It has the white plastic base, and you've got the wonderful little bottom here. And then with the flower frog, you are also getting this wonderful black and white picture. Now, this black and white picture has two little kids. I don't know when this was taken, but look at this. How cute are they? They're little cowboy fellas, and I love that old car in the background. It kind of looks like New York City, but I can't swear to it. It does have a date of 19... Oh, I said I don't know when this is from, but I'm just noticing I think 1947 is when this photo was taken. So really, really cool. You'll get the flower frog and the photograph together. So you'll get this little pair for only $10, $10 for the flower frog and the black and white photo by giving me number 26, 26 for the flower frog. Okay, so the green drip planter went to Elderly Poodle, which doesn't surprise me because we were just chatting on my um, Instagram about how she likes that drip glaze. So congratulations. Uh, the next piece, um, I guess I should say pieces, I have two pieces of Mexican pottery. The first one is this cat here, and the second one is this fish. So I'm selling them together. They are, I'll put them in the size of my hand. I forgot to bring a... Um, tape measure so I, I don't know their size but I'll put them in my hand just so you can sort of get an idea they're they're kind of small um, they're both around the same size and they don't uh, have any cracks but they do have a couple of, mar of chips so at the back here on the tip of the tail there's a bit of a chip but it looks like someone has sort of tried to repair the coloring with maybe a marker or something like that or paint um, but you can't you can't really see it I I, I don't think and then um, same here with the ear. So anywhere there's sort of something that sticks out, it got a little bit chipped there, but nothing that I would say is a huge issue. Um, they both do have uh, markings of Mexico. Um, this one says Mexico, and then this one there also says Mexico. Can you see that? Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm selling the pair together. I'm asking $16 for the pair, so $8 each. And uh, the number is number one. So number one for the uh, Mexican pottery fish and cat. All right, great. Uh, as you can see, I'm starting to build a wall behind me. So the uh, bookends did not sell. So that is still available. And actually the uh, bottles from earlier had not uh, have any, anybody claim those. So for those who are joining late, you can grab items uh, that uh, did not already get claimed by looking behind me. 
All right, the next item I've got uh, was admittedly a, a name and a brand that I had not been familiar with. So I started doing some research on it and was a fun little uh, rabbit hole to go down. It is a pair of yellow wear mugs with this cool blue stripe, kind of a, a yellow wear, stone wear, uh, earthen wear type mug, you know, so pretty thick walled by it's it's well I'm not even I can't even claim that what is who it's made by it just says a hundred percent Buckeye pure. So I went to school in Ohio. I did not go to the Ohio State University. Emphasis on the the uh, who are the Ohio State Buckeyes. So I was not a Buckeye myself, but you couldn't enter the state without getting pelted by them. So I'm going to assume that this was manufactured by one of the many, many stoneware pottery manufacturers that are located in Ohio because they've got good clay. Um, so you've got this one, which is in pristine condition. It's got this great uh, flat topped um, angled handle. It has the two blue stripes at the top and the bottom. And then you uh, hopefully you can see that that's actually kind of an in-sized mark. So it's actually engraved into the bottom, uh, it's molded into the bottom of the mug. The second one is the identical mug. Unfortunately, and I don't know if you'll be able to tell, you can see there's some cracks on them. And unfortunately, two of the cracks do go all the way through. So there's that V shape um, that has two of the cracks that go through. So basically what I'm doing is I'm selling you the one mug and giving you the other mug for free. So if it turns out that you do not want uh, a damaged mug, Trust me, I totally understand. I usually don't carry damaged items, but because these could be used in a vignette or to hold you know, air plants or whatever, it has the integrity enough to actually sit on a shelf. It just wouldn't have any integrity to be used or washed on a regular basis. I'm sure that those cracks will expand. Um, so I uh, did a little bit of digging. I'm not familiar particularly with yellow wear. You know, I'm surprised how well these actually sell. So they sell fairly regularly. Uh, usually in the twelve to eighteen dollar each uh, category, so I'm selling the pair of them for ten bucks. So ten dollars for the one hundred percent Buckeye Pure mugs, one in pristine condition, one with a little bit of damage. Ten dollars by giving me number eighty one. Ten dollars eighty one for the Buckeye Pure mugs. <laughs> My next item is a vase and it is a pretty pink color for Valentine's Day. Now, there is absolutely no maker on this, um, no distinctions whatsoever. Um, Michelle at Newton's Cover and I and some other people have tried to figure out exactly what it was, but because this style of vase is quite the mystery to everyone because many people attempted to make it, there is no way to tell who, who made that, but I do absolutely love this faint uh, pink color there. It does have some crazing in it. It may be hard to see on camera, but it does have crazing on that. The uh, base is about five and a half inches tall, and it's just shy of six inches across at the base. Um, the, wide, the wide part up here is about five and a half inches as well, but this beautiful little pink base that I think is pretty perfect for Valentine's Day is $15 and it's number 68. Well, congratulations to CLC, Tommy Cable. She is getting that wonderful flower ball with the cute little picture inside. That was pretty popular. So congrats on that. And thank you very much. Now I have another fun piece for you. Great little piece of advertising. I have an Elk typewriter ribbon tin. This is the Miller, Bryant, and Pierce typewriter ribbon tin for Royal Number 10 typewriters. This is black record ink, so it is older. Now, most of these were made uh, by a separate company, the tins themselves, and then the ink and all of that was uh, made, and then you had the uh, design put on later. So I'm not exactly sure who made this. Most of these round metal ones that were made from leftover pieces of uh, cans and other things were made by decorated metal. So I'm not entirely sure, but that's just my best guess. Now, this elk tin has a little scratching and some paint loss here or there, but that's to be expected with these old advertising tins. I think this is just fabulous in the display. I love the elk on the front. I got one of these for Christmas, and so now I found another one, and it's coming to you in this sale. 
probably from around 1950 or so is my guess, 40s or 50s for this one. And he is awesome. So you can have a typewriter ribbon pin just like me and start your own collection for only $8, $8 for the typewriter ribbon pin by giving me number 36. $8, number 36. Okay, so the Mexican pottery cat and fish went to Michelle from Newton's Cupboard. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, the next thing I have is a little teapot. And no, I won't start singing, even though I, I was just tempted to. Um, so it's this little green uh, teapot here. And uh, I just, I don't know if you guys know, but green is my favorite color. So I tend to pick up green items and I just thought this was so pretty. It is marked Japan there on the bottom. And it is quite a small um, teapot. You can't, I don't know if you can really get the size, but definitely single serve. But I would use this, um, you know, all, you can use it for tea or anything like that, but also uh, like hot beverage, you can also just use it for decor. So I could see it with some beautiful brightly colored flowers in there. I use it in a green display for St. Patrick's Day, whatever you choose. I'm asking $8. And um, the number is 23. So $8, number 23 for the green uh, ceramic teapot. You think it's my sale? You think I remember the order of things? I suddenly realized, oh crap, I'm next. <laughs> so um, I got update uh, my last item. The Buckeye Pure Mugs did not go to Southern Buckeye, but that's quite all right. They went to Tippy Wings Vintage. So thank you very much, Christy, for picking that up. And for those of you paying really close attention, the bookends are missing uh, because Doug Grimes paid attention and noticed that they were still available and he claimed those up. So number 84, the Scotty bookends goes to Doug Grimes. So thank you, Doug, for picking those up. I did a uh, video uh, this past weekend. I ended up doing it as a live chat because I discovered I hadn't recorded anything to post during my normal Sunday slot. And I actually showed the contents of one of my display cabinets. And as I was putting everything back into the cabinet, I decided to pull some stuff and put it up for sale. And so this is one of them. I had mentioned these during the, uh, during the live chat that this I kind of developed all through reselling. And I've only been reselling for about a year and a half. So some of these collections are relatively new. I developed a Tabacchiana uh, collection because I thought these uh, little container, the little cigarette holders, I just thought these were really cool and like say it with me coasters i love coasters if you're not if you're new to my channel you don't understand why i said that just let's keep it to i'm obsessed by coasters so these technically when they're sold alone they do make a great coaster but they were sold as a set they are royal worcester porcelain english porcelain they're both very clearly marked they are of the same design uh the coaster it has a lavender color rose on both the cigarette holder also has a decoration, a smaller rose on the back. These are also the perfect size. And when I sell them on Etsy, I typically list them as sugar packet holders. It's a little bit small for a deck of cards, um, unless you've got you know kid cards, but it's perfect for sugar packets, sweet and low, things like that. And it looks great on a dining table. And then when you throw this in, this becomes the tea bag, the wet tea bag holder for those who do the proper um, you know, making your own tea. You can do whatever you want with them. You can use a cigarette holder in an ashtray. You can use it to hold whatever you like. I've sold some of these before. I've included some in mystery boxes. I think it was Auntie Christie or somebody mentioned that they use this to hold uh, Q-tips in their bathroom. Um, you know, some of us do have nice things in our bathrooms too. So this is a uh, set came out of the top shelf of my curio cabinet. It can now go into the top shelf of yours. So again, it's a Royal Worcester uh, pattern. I actually don't know what the pattern number is, but it's Royal Worcester. And the pair, the set, is available to you for $12. $12 for the Royal Worcester by giving me number 76. $12.76 for the Royal Worcester. All right. It is brooch time. I have a brooch um, for you guys tonight. And in honor of Valentine's Day, it's got a little rose in the So it is a metal brooch. All of this is metal here, um, and the rose is metal as well as the stem. And it has some great detail in there, if you can see the veins and the leaves, as well as the thorns in the stem. But it has some green leaves around, 
and in on the back as well. It just has the little lobster paw piece there. And this brooch is actually, I think it was three and a half inches uh, tall by two inches at the petals there. So it is a rather large brooch for me. It's large for me. But um, this cute brooch can be yours for $12 for 55 for number 55 well, congratulations to Melody's many minute miscellaneous. Melody Harris is getting that typewriter 10. And guys, it is time for Mr. Kangaroo to come hop in your way. Here he is. Oh my word. So I have a fabulous dress for Caddy for you tonight. This is gonna be fun. This is uh, Mr. Katie Kangaroo or Mrs. Katie Kangaroo as many people have named him in the chat. Now, he was featured in the movie Pulp Fiction, so if you like Pulp Fiction, you will recognize this little guy. He had the watch hanging from him, and this is so fun. This is a boxing kangaroo. He has these little boxing gloves on. He is wonderful. You can put your rings on his little tail here, so you got a spot for his ring. You can put your wallet in the back here. You've got a spot for a wallet, and of course, you can put coins, change, a brooch, whatever you like, and he does fit your glasses. So if you're always losing your glasses and you need something to hold them, he will actually hold, oops, a little hard to do without my glasses on because I can't see, but he will actually hold your glasses. I promise that he does. Fabulous little piece here. He is made by the company of Fine Enterprise. A fine enterprise, but he is marked there, a fine enterprise, and he has his USA stamp. There is absolutely no issues on his front except for his little ear has the tiniest little flea bite there. I hope the camera is picking that up, but he is in great shape other than that, and he has some craze in here, but that's about it. And he was in the movie. Pulp Fiction, so he kind of has a little following with that. He's also the boxing kangaroo, and just overall a really fun, amazing wrestler caddy. So you can have this iconic piece of movie fun for only $35. Only $35 for the little kangaroo, and he will be yours if you give me the number 42, 42 for the kangaroo. <laughs> okay, so I have uh, Sue Golombeski for the Japan uh, Green Teapot. So thank you very much, Sue, and congratulations. The next items I have are two postcards, and they're both for um, uh, holidays that are coming up. So the first one is a St. Patrick's Day postcard. So this is it here. I'm partial to it because it does say um, Aaron's Isle on it. Um, you know, another name for Ireland. And then it says Old Ireland, I bid ye the top of the morning. So very great, vibrant illustration there. It is a used postcard. So the um, stamp on there says uh, Lancaster, Ohio, uh, 1909. And then it's to Miss Hazel something or other something or other something or other i can't really read it but anyhow it's beautiful sort of cursive writing there and then but then it does say down here it says this is from someone else so i'm not really sure uh what that means but anyhow it's this postcard here and then the next poster card i have um says welcome easter morning and it's this sweet little chick there and um sorry i'm going the wrong way there there you can uh, get there there we go it says welcome easter morning there and some gold uh writing with just the brown background would look good in a flower frog something along the lines of what katie just sold and then this one says i believe it's also 1909 but it's kind of cut off by the stamp there and uh dear aunt a happy easter from mary and dorothy so there we go. I've got the set of two uh, postcards. They can be yours for $8 if you give me the number 25. So 25 for the two uh, postcards, $8. All right. Congratulations to Auntie Kay for picking up my last item, the pair of Royal Worcester 
uh, cigarette holder and coaster. Looks like she's going to start organizing more of her bathroom in the Royal Worcester style. So hope you enjoy those ATK. Also looking at the chat, I'm so glad that uh, Katie's kangaroo was so popular. I know there are a couple of comments on her chat and then a couple of people were asking here. It's just I, the way I do things, I think it's more fun to do them as offer, uh, to do it without offer up, to just do first to claim. And it's just kind of fun, you know, and it goes a little bit faster and it lets somebody grab it for what is a good price that we as resellers want to offer. Katie probably could have made more money uh, had she done it as an offer up. You guys could have paid, her, paid more to get it. Um, but the rest of us would have been bored watching that happen. Uh, and so I was grateful that she included it on my sale because she could have absolutely done that as an offer up someplace else. So I've, I'm honored that Katie did that and I hope you guys had fun. I think Nate said there were 16 or 17 bidders on that one. So he was, he was, a, he was a fun item. So I'm glad you picked that up. And thank you, Auntie Kay, for picking up uh, my item. Uh, next item I've got also came out of my booth. Uh, this is also a small lot of restaurant wear. I tried to keep it in consideration that restaurant wear, since it's a little bit sturdier, it's also a little bit heavier. I didn't want the shipping to get too expensive. So I brought some of my smaller pieces uh, to create um, a small lot of restaurant wear. So what I've got in this lot are four pieces. You've got a, a pair of Jackson China from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, They're both marked clearly from Jackson China. They've got this cool wave pattern on the side. Um, it's kind of a small little piece. I mean, I guess it could be maybe a fruit cup. It's a little small to be like a cereal bowl or to be anything you know more significant. Um, so I'm not exactly sure. I, Barb is, if Barb's still here from Winking Owl, she's the restaurant wear expert. I don't know if this shape, you can see there's kind of a curve there. I don't know if this shape has a name. Uh, so you've got the matching bowls from Jackson, and then you've got two more pieces, which are, um, they're, I'm, I'm going to say they're the same pattern, but they're done in a different scale. So I don't know if that makes them a different type. So you've got almost like that gold print, almost like, like it's from Corel, uh, Cor Corel. Um, you've got the border all the way around this bread and butter plate, under plate, whatever. There's no indentation. So it's not a saucer or anything. So you just have this small plate, but I was using as an under plate to the matching bowl. So the patterns are the same, but you can see the pattern on the bowl scale wise is bigger than the pattern on the, the plate. So that's why I actually had them priced separately just because I wasn't sure uh, what people were looking for. So each piece had been uh, either five or $4. The four pieces together had been $19 in my booth. And instead of $19 in my booth, I'm selling them here on my channel for nine. So $9 uh, for the lot of restaurant wear from Jackson and uh, I'm sorry, the bowl and underplate were Shenango, China. So you've got uh, two pieces from Philadelphia and to uh, Pennsylvania and then Shenango is New Carlisle, Pennsylvania. So you've got a whole set of restaurant wear from Pennsylvania for $9 by giving me number 79, $9.79 for the restaurant wear lot. And with perfect timing, we had some technical difficulty and Beth just came back as I was finishing my number. So we're moving it on to Beth. Oh, that made me very nervous, Patrick. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, my next item is was perfect timing is this cute little wooden hand carved hinged box. This is the detail on the top. I just thought that was so beautiful. It does have its two hinges here. It is about three inches by three inches, and it is a just a little wooden box. It does not have any marker. The sticker is gone um, off of that, but this little wooden hinged box is $6, number 59. $6, number 59. Well, guys, I am so excited to announce that Jamie and Vincent Reraced did won the kangaroo, but what's even cooler is he is gifting it to Mary Beth, and you guys all know in the chat, Mary Beth really, really wanted that kangaroo. So I am so excited to announce that you guys are awesome. And Jamie, thank you so much for your kind gift. That is just wonderful. So the next item that I have is a fun piece of ephemera, great piece of advertising as well. This is a Coca-Cola soda drink hat from the 1950s. 
It does have some foxing on it due to age, but these were sitting in a box, so they were never used. This is, in a sense, new old stock. It does have the hat. You can wear it or put it on a mannequin if you like. I think that would be kind of fun is having a mannequin dressed like a soda jerk and have this on top. It does have a little foxing, as I mentioned. It is paper and it is gold. It is made by in Columbus, Ohio, by the Paper Linen Company. I think that's how you say that. It's got all of its marks on the inside. Really fabulous. Now, this would look good in a frame. I wanted to get a frame for it, but I couldn't find one. So you can frame it up, put it on a mannequin, put it in a flower frog, do whatever you like to do with this fabulous piece of advertising from the 1950s. Guys, you don't see these very often. And the ones I have been seeing on eBay are selling for $50 or more. So I'm really happy to give you a super deal on this. I think you guys are going to love this piece. And it is only $20 for the Coca-Cola 1950s soda jerk hat if you give me the number 32. 32 for the Coca-Cola soda jerk hat. That is super cool, Katie. Um, okay, so the postcards went to Cindy from Mimi's Treasure Cottage. So thank you very much, Cindy. Um, the next thing I have is a set of four enamel bowls. Um, they are the white enamel here with the black um, rim around it. They are in used vintage condition, okay? So there are scratches along the bottom. There are, um, you know, as well as on the outside bottom, there's like a little bit of rust growing there. Um, this one here has a, a chip out of it, but they, that just gives them character, right? Enamelware is uh, built tough. You can sort of throw them around, but they do get some uh, dings, but they're still, you know, keep their shape. And there's a big, you should see that there. But I, I like the character that it gives. So you can use these for um, whatever you want, an organizing project, whole little, you know, tidbits, that sort of thing. They are easily wipeable. So whatever you want to use these for, I'm asking $12 for the set of four. And the number is going to be number 16. So number 16, uh, $12 for the enamel bowls, set of four. Uh, thank you for to Nettie for picking up my restaurant wear a lot. Uh, thank you for uh, claiming that one. Uh, my next item actually dates back uh, maybe a couple of weeks. I also did a live, I did a live haul video of a bunch of video game, uh, video games, yeah, whatever, uh, a bunch of vintage games that I picked up at an estate sale. And I have to say, this one was my favorite. It probably doesn't like stay in the category of game, because as you can see, it's the Frosty Freeze Ice Creamer. You make it yourself in seconds. And so what it is, is it's a vintage uh, ice cream maker. I think I had a date on this one from the 60s. Most of the toys that I picked up from them were from the 60s. And what it comes with is a little, uh, the little instructions of how to use the Frosty Freeze Ice Creamer. It has the an address on the back without a zip code. So it's actually early 60s because zip codes were introduced in 1963. So if you ever see a zip code, you know it's past that. Um, it has, it still has these, I don't know how old these would be, but these little um, cupcake, uh, uh, what do you call these? Wrappers, holders, wrappers, I guess, papers. Uh, you've got those that were included. One of my favorite things in here, I, I'm assuming these came with the uh, came with the ice cream maker to begin with, but it's this string of the little wood spoons that you'd get in the lid of ice creams. So you've got all of these vintage little uh, wrapped spoons, a packet of junket rennet dessert mix, raspberry flavor rennet custard. I've not heard of this. Um, and I'm also, this was, I was unclear whether this came with the uh, set or not, because there are actually several flavors of this orange, banana, even the color on the label is kind of disgusting. So I don't know what that's going to taste like. Um, and of course, the ice cream maker itself. So you got the little cups to make the ice cream in. Um, I, the metal little roller thing that runs through it's kind of looking a little toxic. So I would say that this is probably designed more for a. Uh, a display uh, because one of the cool things they did with the box 
The box is relatively large, but it does fit in a 12 by 12. So it would ship uh, and it's not very heavy at all. So it'll ship very easily. They created this little ice cream like diner kind of interior where the ice cream maker actually sits into it. It's got the little fake tile floor. So, you know, you set this up in a little display. It's actually very, very cool. Um, so I got all kinds of really cool games. Some I'd never even heard of. Some of the people in the live chat, none of them had heard of them. Uh, this was just my favorite just because, I'm sorry, like the graphics on this are freaking awesome. And it was something I just wasn't familiar with. So I'm just looking to see on the front if it said, it says it makes custards, but it doesn't say if it included. So I don't know how old those custard boxes are because they're full. There's stuff in there. You could still make it. 1963 custard. So anyway, like I said, it'll ship in a 12 by 12 standard uh, priority, priority box. It's probably only going to weigh a pound and a half or two pounds. It's not very heavy. And you can have it for 15 bucks. So $15 for the Frosty Freeze Ice Creamer. $15 by giving me number 86. $15.86 for the ice creamer. That looks appetizing. <laughs> um, speaking of appetizing, I've got a cookbook for you. It is a first printing, uh, 1976, of an hors d'oeuvre, um, sunset hors d'oeuvres. It has appetizers, spreads, and dips. Um, it is a it's a good little cookbook, but I love the graphics inside of it. Great colors. Got to check out those wardrobes there that they are wearing. It has lots of different types of recipes in there. And also it has just some basic information for cooking. It is a um, older cookbook, but not too, too old. So we should still be able to make all the recipes in here. This cookbook is only $6 and it is number 71. $6, number 71. Thank you and congratulations to Rose Spangenberg. You got the Coca-Cola for the Dirt Cat. I'll be coming your way and very fabulous piece. The next item I have for you guys tonight is a creamer and sugar set. Very fun creamer and sugar set. Now this is Fire King oven proof glass on the bottom. It says Fire King. This is in the Pearl pen. This is kind of like a, a clustered glass. It is really neat. I love the Art Deco design on the lid and the handles. Absolutely no chips or cracks in this whatsoever. Wonderful uh, sugar here. And then I've got the creamer as well to go with it. So here's the creamer with that swirl. It's just really fabulous. And again, it's marked uh, Fire King Ovenware on the bottom. No issues on this piece either. So you've got this lovely set, great in the kitchen, or just like Patrick had, that ice cream, you could uh, do some fun things with it. It'll be yours for only $15 for the Fire King Swirl Creamer and Sugar if you give me number 39. 39 for the Fire King Swirl Creamer and Sugar. Okay, so uh, Maria from Empty Nesting, Two, or empty nesting two, I think. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. Uh, but definitely empty nesting something. Um, you got the enamel bowl. So the next thing I have is a, a tin. It is a, a quite a rusty tin. Um, it is a toffee tin uh, from Horner, uh, made in England by George W. Horner and Co. at Chester Ellie Street, County of Durham. So I just thought the woman on this tin was super, super lovely. And I sort of also love the juxtaposition of the fact that she's in this super beautiful dress and then the tin is really rusty. So I just thought that was really neat. It's a well-loved tin. Um, I don't know the date of this tin, but I do know that I looked it up. The um, Horner uh, store, not corner store, but Horner store um, closed in the 60s, I think early 60s. So this um, is likely pre-60s, <laughs> um, probably older than that. But anyhow, um, it does have like a little thing on the bottom, on the side there that says um, made in England, made in England, George W. Horner and uh, what it was. So an assortment of toffee, toffees um, and then it's got some ingredients, which maybe would help date it. So I'm confused by this because... Anyhow, I'm not going to go into dating. I just, uh, the store closed in um, the early 60s. So anyway, this is it here. It does open up. Um, 
It's also sort of rusty on the inside, but anyway, super cool tin. Um, the size is about the size of um, my hand. <laughs> So you can sort of get an idea of the size there. Um, I'm asking $16 for this uh, tin and the number is going to be number six. So number six for this um, beautiful rusty tin. I agree with Polly's projects, Aaron. I think the shape of that tin is actually really cool. Uh, so number 86, I uh, thank you to Linda Clark. Uh, you claimed the ice cream, uh, the ice creamer. Um, so enjoy if you make anything, make sure your insurance is up to date, uh, but let us know uh, how you end up utilizing that. Uh, the next item I've got, I think we all agree it's time for a drink. So this one unfortunately is empty, but it was one of the, my favorite bottles and decanters that I had in my booth. I did a little bit of digging into this one and what I enjoyed about it was, well, first, if you're familiar with my channel, you know, all things German and Austrian, uh, we are big fans of here. My uh, daughter, the Huckster Helper, she was studying in Germany until she was recalled because of the current situation. Um, but she's a German his, uh, history and German double major. So she loves all things German. I fell in love with Austria uh, when we visited and just spent Christmas and New Year with her um, while she was uh, studying in Germany. So German and Austrian things pop up here a lot. This is a liqueur bottle. Escorial Green. I know Diana from Little Vintage Me is on. I don't know if she's familiar with this one, but it just warmed the cockles of my heart when I showed this to the Huckster Helper, who is here 21, but in Germany, it didn't matter. And she said she did try it while she was there. And I, she, there are many things that is very clear that the Huckster Helper is my daughter, but it, taking alcohol at excess is not one of them. So I was quite glad, glad that she had tried this, but she also said it was completely horrendous because it's, a, first of all, the Escorial Green, who came up with that name? And then it's a Bavarian herb liqueur. Like there is just not a single word there other than maybe liqueur that is attractive. So this bottle uh, pretty sells, does sell fairly regularly on eBay. Uh, there are th uh, three of them listed right now. There's actually more, but there's two bottle sizes. Uh, this is the 750 millimeter. This is the larger milliliter. This is the larger of the two. Uh, most of them say it dates to the 60s although the import label does include the zip code of the American importer. So it's at least past 63, but I think those graphics uh, pretty much do indicate the 60s. And one of the descriptions said, I don't know if Diana would know, specifically said that this was an Oktoberfest map, but I think this is just downtown Munich or just an overview of Munich because you've got the Olympic Stadium stuff out on the edges. So I don't know if this specifically is for Oktoberfest or if it's just for Munich. It's cool. Um, it's still got the original label on the back, great artwork, uh, still got the original stopper on the top. They sell online, uh, for this one, the estimated weight, I'd say around a pound. So once you throw it in a box, it's probably gonna be like maybe a pound and a half. I wouldn't even, it might hit two pounds, but I don't think so. It's not, it's not super heavy. You can't even see the thinness of the, um, wall there of the bottle. It's not like a super, super heavy, heavy bottle. Um, so it's pretty cool. They pretty much, uh, the ones, the first three listed on eBay right now are between 23 and 30. Uh, I had it uh, in that range in my booth. I'm selling it here for 18. So $18 for the Escorial Green Munchen, which is Munich uh, uh, illustration, $18, number 95. $18.95 for the Escorial Green Munich bottle. Okay, for my next item, I'm super excited because I uh, did a mystery envelope. Um, and I know that Michelle at Comfy Living is starting doing her junk journaling classes and things of that nature. And recently I ran across a lot of great ephemera, like old ephemera, like really old, like 1900s, 1913. So in my free envelope here, um, it is going to be a... a envelope that is an 18 by 13 and of course it will have some um, cardboard and things in there but just a little hint it is from 1913 um, and I'm gonna give you a peek if you watched my Instagram story you may have seen it but um, there are over 20 pieces in there that are both front and back 20 pieces that have advertisement um, it has articles in there um, and it's it is the longer 
uh, pieces of ephemera, but this is just a sneak peek at some of the ad or the pieces that would be in as part of the ephemera mystery envelope. So this mystery envelope is going with over 20 pieces front and back of ephemera from the 1913 um, time period is going to be $15 and it is number 69. 69 for the mystery envelope. Congratulations and thank you to Nettie. You are picking up the creamer and sugar set. And I'm going to follow along with that mystery theme. That looks amazing, Beth. But I actually have a mystery lot of vinyl for you. So I wouldn't need vintage vinyl without the vinyl component. So I have a mystery lot of vinyl. Now here's what you'll be getting in a lot. You will be getting four uh, 45, actually 545 that are a complete mystery, and you'll be getting two LPs that spin around at 33 and a third RPM, so two 33s and 545. Each record will come clean personally by me. I'll clean them all on my spin clean, and they will be put in the high fidelity sleeves. So this is a real value because I'm giving you my best sleeves and I will make sure that each record has a protective jacket as well. So you are getting all of that. And it's a fun, fun collection of vinyl. I think you guys are going to really like this. And you can have the mystery lot of vinyl for only $16. That was a super value, guys. And you can have the mystery lot of vinyl by giving me number 43. 43 for my mystery lot of vinyl. Okay, so the next item I have... Um, is a set and it is a pair or a pair, I guess you could say, uh, is a pair of uh, pillowcases. So it is a pair of vintage, super groovy patterned pillowcases with the green and the blue and the white there. They are a standard size. There are no um, stains or anything like that. I've got the pair, they're a perfect match. Um, they don't have uh, a tag with a, um, a maker, I don't think. Not that I can remember. Let's see here. No, they don't. Um, but they are good quality. There's no sort of pilling or anything like that. They don't feel like 100% cotton because they have a bit of that, um, like, they don't wrinkle that well. So there might be a bit of polyester in there. I'm not really sure. But anyhow, for the pair of... Uh, super groovy patterned pillowcases, perfect for sort of spring and summer or just in the winter if you need some some joy in your life. Um, I'm asking $12 for the pair and the number is going to be number 19. So number 19 for the uh, pillowcases. All right, congratulations to Melody for picking up the Oktoberfest uh, Escorial Green Bottle to add to her Oktoberfest collection. I'm uh, piggybacking onto Beth's ephemera collection. I'm not doing it as a mystery lot, but I have some ephemera myself. And it is a collection of just everyone wants to be upbeat and positive today. All about Kennedy's death. <laughs> it's a theme. Uh, so what I have is a series of large format. These are all the large format magazines. So we've got the Life magazine, the last seconds of the motorcade. That's from November 24th, 1967. As I'm saying this out loud, I'm thinking this was a really bad idea for a theme, but whatever. Uh, the Death of a President. Uh, so this is Look Magazine from 19, March 1967. The Flight from Dallas, Look Magazine from February 1967. The Day JFK Died, a Look Magazine from February 1967. The Warren Report. Uh, this is a Life magazine from October 1964. And Life magazine, the Lee Harvey Oswald um, uh, di Diaries. There's a big chunk of it missing, but it's the Lee Harvey, Lee Harvey Oswald, Lee Oswald, uh, 1964. And I just realized that some of these were, must have been Robert Kennedy because they're 69. Um, no, the last minutes, the last more seconds of the motorcade, 67. Shows Kennedy in the motorcade. So I'm not, you know, that was well after his uh, death. So I'm not sure at what why these were still coming out years later. But it is a set of six of the large format magazines between life. I think they were all either life or look. 
I have some Saturday evening posts, but I don't think, yeah, those didn't, those didn't make it in here. Uh, some of the ads are in color. So you've got Winston, you've got Salem, you've got Paul Mall. Do we see a theme? <laughs> We've got Tempo. I haven't even heard of those. We've got another Paul Mall and another Paul Mall. At least, you know, they, they varied their advertising. And then inside, this is, uh, let me pull one of the 60, uh, let me pull a 67 one. They're probably more in color. Um, Viceroy, like, look, there's just cigarettes everywhere. Um, so for junk journaling, we've got the Chrysler 67. Uh, you know, frame these up or just enjoy the articles. And if you're a Kennedy buff, you've got a whole stack to keep you busy. So it's six of the large format magazines between Look and Life. All six magazines, again, for eight bucks. Eight dollars for the large format set of magazines by giving me number 77. Eight dollars 77 for the Kennedy mix. That was so uplifting. I think in order for us to get through that, um, I'll use my next item to be a German shot glass because <laughs> we need something to get us through that. But I did check with Patrick because I wanted to make sure y'all that this wine stoop, uh, Lotch Heilberg, um, I think that's what that says, Heidelberg. It's a, a shot glass. It does have the little mark right here as like a jigger, but it is a um, glass. And this little shot glass is um, only $4 and it's number 58. $4, number 58. All righty, guys. Well, I've got a fun item for you next. I'm very excited to pass on some more advertising. Oh, and I want to announce the winner of the vinyl mystery lot. Let me do that here. I see a couple of people who are really interested in that. And the vinyl mystery lot I have down. Nate is so good at keeping track. Terry Nichols. So congratulations, Terry Nichols. You are getting that vinyl lot. Now what I have for you is a fun piece of advertising. If you guys saw my eco relic shop with me or my eco relic haul, you would have seen this. And I'm passing this on to you from my personal collection. It is a really cool sweet snuff tin with the tops logo. Now this has a paper label and it is just really fun. I love that tops graphic. It has a grocery price tag of 67 cents with this really cool rusty lid. Of course, we all love our rusty, crusty and dusty when it comes to advertising tins. Now the paper label is coming off as you guys notice up around the top, but it really doesn't affect it as far as display goes. You can still see that graphic really well. I do want to point out it does have a barcode. So this is probably around 1973 or so when barcodes came out and it still has the grocery price tag because as somebody pointed out in one of my lives, is even if they came out with barcodes, a lot of stores weren't equipped to handle the barcode yet, so they would have still put a price tag on the top. So really, really neat piece, great in a little vignette or a display. And you can have this Topps Sweet Snuff 10 for only $7 by giving me the number 27. 27 for the Sweet Snuff 10. Okay, so the pillowcases uh, went to Not Lost, Just Wandering. Great uh, name there. Uh, so you are new to me, so just make sure that you um, send me all your info via email. Nate's been writing it in the um, chat there, um, Soul Nate. But um, my email is gentlethriftymama at gmail.com. So just make sure you send all your info. So thank you. Uh, the next thing I have is a little duck <laughs> and is a blue mountain pottery duck. And I would say it's just about maybe five inches tall. There are no chips or cracks. Got that beautiful um, greeny sort of um, with the black decor um, color there, sorry. And it is redware um, like uh, Blue Mountain Pottery is. So uh, anyway, it's hollow making it a fairly um, light, light piece, not too heavy. Um, so it's in excellent condition. I'm asking $12 for the duck and the number is going to be number 24. So number 24 for the Blue Mountain Pottery duck. I love that Blue Mountain Pottery. I have a piece of that in my booth. The first I ever came across and it is a ginormous fish and I'm hoping desperately that it sells because I don't want to have to ship it. It's about 18 inches tall and about 20 inches long. 
Um, but it's uh, it's an amazing piece. And that was the first Blue Mountain Pottery because that's a Canadian company that I'd ever come across. Uh, so thank you for uh, number 77, my lot of magazines. Thank you, Polly's Project. Sorry you didn't get the kangaroo, but you get the death of, of Kennedy. So, you know, I think that's an even trade. So the next item I have is following up on Aaron's bird. I've got a bird of my own. So we do not have a Blue Mountain Pottery bird, but we've got a pretty decent sized bird. I should have measured him before, like measure really quick because he's pretty tall. He's big. He's one of the bigger sizes that I've ever sold. He's eight inches tall. So he's got a pretty decent height to him. Uh, really elaborate design on the base where you've got the different fruits and the leaves carved or you know formed into uh, the, the trunk that he is standing on. And then the detail in himself, he's got you know little speckles on his head. As he gets into his feathers, they you know they kind of try to give the um, the look and feel of all the individual feathers plus the individual painting. He's in absolutely perfect condition. There's no chips, there's no cracks, all the little raised flowers, everything's in perfect condition. He's not marked in any way. He just has the unfinished bisque, uh, bisque um, bottom, um, but he's a great looking piece. I had him in my booth for $15 and I'm selling him here for 12. So $12 for the large eight inch tall bird. Um, I don't know, what would you call it? I don't. I don't think he's a parrot. Finch, I'm not actually sure what he would be considered, um, but he's got, his tail's not super long. So I don't think he's, uh, I think he's just like a regular songbird, uh, but 12 bucks for the songbird, number 83. 12 bucks, 83 for the bird. Okay, we're getting ready for St. Patrick's Day and we all need a little green. So I have two eight inch plates that are the tiara pattern, I believe. Katie, make sure that I am not wrong about that. But it is the tiara pattern. It's a beautiful, um, I think it's a very intricate little design. And yes, they are uranium. So both of the plates are uranium glass and they do have a very beautiful glow on them. Um, there are two of these eight inch plates with this beautiful decor and design in there. And they are $18 for the set, $18 for the pair of uranium plates, number 63. Fantastic. Boy, I love that uranium. So congratulations to Donna Damama60. She is getting my last item. So thank you so very much. And the item I have next for you, just a sweet little plate, bring some happiness after the death of Kennedy. And I love this one. I think Patrick might have had one of these before. I recognize it from somewhere, but it was a lovely little cardinal fish. Now, this could be used as a coaster, if you would like, or it could be a butter pat. I'm not exactly sure. It might be a little large for a butter pat. It has a beautiful transfer cardinal design. Oh, and it is a coaster, Patrick says. So, yes, it's a coaster. Love this wonderful little piece here with the transfer darn cardinal. Now, it does have a wonderful, uh, great uh, silver here. I love the silver overlay. Now, there is a little issue in the glaze. Now, this is just in the glaze. It's not that it was um, an issue uh, afterwards. So it, it's how it was made. I don't know that that's going to show up, but you can see it's a little bumpy there. But absolutely nothing wrong with this wonderful little piece. It is made in Japan. And yes, it does have a little rim at the bottom. So it would make sense that these are coasters so multiple ones could stack together. But this cardinal is so cute. He'd be great in a spring display. And you can have him for only $7 by giving me the number 37. 37 for the Cardinal poster. Good price. Okay, so the uh, little ducky went to uh, Michelle from Newton's Cupboard. So congratulations, Michelle. Um, the next uh, thing I have for you guys is a set of four juice glasses or something else. I would use them as juice glasses. So they are, they are unmarked. Um, so I don't know their age. I don't know their maker, but I just thought, think that they're super cool. They just got um, gold lines there all the way, you know, through there. Really nice shiny gold color. Uh, they are pretty tiny. Um, there are a set of four of them. And they've got a beautiful sort of detail here at the bottom where they sort of like go out a little bit there. So excellent condition. There are no chips, no cracks. Um, 
very little wear at all. Um, I wouldn't even say that there are any scrapes or scratches or anything on them. So they're a uh, great, great condition. I'm asking uh, $16, so $4 each. So 16 for the set of four. And uh, the number for the glasses is number 21. So number 21 for the set of four glasses. All right, we had no takers on the bird, which I think uh, for Sandy's lilac correctly identified as a girl speak. So that is now sitting behind me if anyone wants to add that at a later time. Uh, the next piece, and this goes for all four of us on the sale currently. If you follow our Instagram channels, we, tip, uh, we, I, we have all done promotions prior to tonight's event to show some of the items that we were going to be selling. And this is one of the items that I was going to have on offer. It is, I did a little bit of research on him since he is such a very distinct look and shape, Google lens to the rescue. So I figured out what he was uh, because he is not, this one actually is covered up. Um, but even when I found some online, not all of them listed who made him because the bottom is unmarked. He is a bank. Uh, this person has turned the bank by put a felt bottom under it. So it's no longer a functional bank, but it's just a cool looking snowman severed head. Uh, so you just have the head of a snowman. It is a bank. It has a slot in the top. It is by the company American Bisque, which admittedly I've not heard of. Uh, it is not a bisque porcelain, though. It is all you can see the light is bouncing off of him. He's entirely high gloss glaze. So it's American Bisque, but it's not the raw bisque porcelain, which I actually prefer. Uh, he's in great condition. There's a couple, there's, if you look at the top, I was looking at some of the other photographs. Some of them had a much more uh, uniform black across the top. So I don't know if maybe he was in the sun. I don't think he may be cold painted, but I don't think that's what that is. So you see, there's a little bit of white that's showing through. Maybe that was how it was painted at the time. And the other one just got a better coat of black. I can't really tell. And then there's another spot on the back. It's not a chip. You can feel right across it. It just appears to be a paint loss so that I, like maybe it was cold painted and that was actually flaked away. Um, he's got some crazing on him. He definitely has some age. The ones that I found all said that he was from the 60s, but I have no proof on that. There's only one listed for sale right now for an insanely high price of $63. Um, so if you look on eBay, you can see what things sold for. And it was uniformly selling somewhere around the $30 range. So I'm making him available here for 25. So the American Bisque Severed Snowman Head is $25 and you can have him by giving me number 91. 91, $25 for the Snowman Bank. Okay, before I forget, I'm going to remember to say that Newton's Covered, you got the German uh, shot glass and Miss Rose Spangenberg, you got the beautiful metal rose uh, brooch and Miss Lorianne Sugar Britches got the e mystery ephemera and Miss Sarah Lee Coleman got the wooden box. I think I'm caught up. Uh, the next piece that I have is a great piece of art glass and I just loved it. Um, it has, it is the shape of a heart if you can see it and the color is not red. It is more of an orange so I'll be honest about that. It does have a smooth um, Pontal here, it is shiny, it's not broken off in any way, no chips or cracks whatsoever in this beautiful little heart-shaped orange and white swirl. Now I did look it up, I'm not going to say it's Murano or even Murano like, there's another company, it's two company maybe, that had one that looked more like it. Murano had the much wider stripe in color there from the ones that I saw, but um, it is a beautiful little orange and white dish. It's five and a half inches and then two and a half inches there. So the orange and white swirl heart dish is $15 and it is number 52. All righty, that is a beautiful dish. Congratulations to Joe L. Nadal. You are getting that transferware, Japan coaster. How wonderful. And I have another fabulous piece of advertising. I just love advertising so much. I have a great piece of ephemera for you. This is a North and South Carolina Phillips 66 map. This is from 1956. 
And there's a gentleman that brought in a whole bunch of these to our local architectural salvage yard. He sold car parts and had all kinds of ephemera. And these were basically sitting in a box. I think he owned a string of gas stations too. So this is a really fabulous piece. It says Phillips Petroleum Company out of Bartsville, Oklahoma. And then it's got the help prevent forest fires on the bottom. Really cool 3D Phillips 66 uh, design on the front. When you open it up, it has a really cool graphic on the inside. So this would be good for junk journaling or you could frame these. I've seen people frame old maps and they're really cool. You have this map key here with these awesome graphics. I just love this. It's an orange color. You've got the uh, Philip 66 and the compass there of the map. So I just love this. I think this is a fun piece. It does open all the way up. Uh, practically brand new, never used. These are kind of like new old stocks just sitting around. Perfect for junk journaling, a display, anything you want to do with the Phillips map. Great piece of advertising. And you can have it for only $6.00. $6 for the Phillips Roadmap by giving me number 30. Okay, so the um, juice set of four juice glasses goes to Nettie. So thank you very much, Nettie. Uh, the next thing I have is a piece of artwork for you guys. And um, it is um, matted, but not framed. So this is the piece of artwork here. It says, uh, it's called Wild flowers. It's a chromolithograph printed in 1895. So I imagine it was from a book. Someone um, had it framed and it says in Montreal. And then it says this is an original antique print, not a reproduction on the back there. So just so you know, <laughs> that's what it says. Um, so anyway, it's a beautiful, beautiful flower here. Give you guys sort of the look of it. And uh, it says, it's got a number 185 and it says cut leaved Phasalia there. And then it says Phasalia bipinatifida or something like that. Anyway, something in um, Latin there. So anyway, this beautiful piece of artwork, I would say is eight and a half by 11 size. I, I can't be sure because I don't have anything to measure it with, but that's the approximate size there. Um, I have something similar and I just put it in an Ikea frame. Um, so it does fit into an Ikea frame or you can thrift the frame, whatever. Um, but anyhow, I, or you could just leave it as is because it's very beautiful, it's very sturdy. Um, so I'm asking $12 uh, for that. And the number for this beautiful piece is number two. So number two for this uh, floral piece of artwork. All right, and thank you to uh, Precious Lavender Buttons. Congratulations for picking up number 91, the Snowman Bank. Uh, so the next item, again, uh, if you're familiar with my channel, uh, you'll always run across a lot of porcelain, pottery, and glass. I don't think I've had actually any glass yet this evening, so I'm throwing this in here. Uh, again, this is an item that came out of my booth. Uh, it is a, hopefully you're seeing the color is coming through kind of okay. It's a very uh, pale pink, almost lavender, but I'd say it's more pink than lavender, uh, that has the hand-painted floral uh, white flower decoration of the dual, uh, either dahlia or daisies on the front, and then a single uh, daisy on the back. It has uh, the bulbous form on the base and then the flared top, uh, so it's a low form vase. You can also see there is a uh, line painted around the base. It is a flashed on color, and yeah, it is painted on because the uh, dots in the flower are actually raised. So it's kind of that Moriage, Moriagi uh, technique. But the color is flashed because if you look at the very bottom, I don't know if you can really see there, it's clear where the body of the vase actually is what has the color. Um, so you've got the, the clear vase. Um, I cannot tell if this, it does not feel like this is a polished pontal. It does look like this was molded but I can't find any seams across the top. So if it was molded, they did it, they fire flashed uh, all of the seams and polished them out. So fire polished the seam. So it's a, it was a pretty high quality piece at the time it was made. I had it in my booth for $15. I'm selling it here for eight. So $8 for the floral painted pink flared vase, $8 giving me number 80. $8 number 80 for the pink glass vase. And thank you to Miss Sheila Putman for picking up that beautiful heart-shaped art glass there. 
So if you like dogs and you like planters, the next item may pique your interest. Look at that face. Is he not darling, y'all? He is so cute. It is a little, I think it's a basset. It's some kind of hound, but I just loved his little face and all of those wrinkles. And he is a little planter there. I have that he is about five inches tall here and about three and a half inches wide here. And then he's only about one and three quarter inches deep, but he has no marking on him whatsoever. And I just like, he even has a little tail over there, y'all. So he is just too cute. That face and everything. The puppy dog planter is $12 and number 73. Too cute. Well, congratulations and thank you to Amy Cox for picking up the Phillips Roadmap. Now, I have another piece coming out of my personal collection for you. You guys can have a little bit of vintage and vinyl. I have this beautiful Art Deco style black glass bowl. Now, this is not black amethyst glass. It is just true black glass. It is pressed glass. There's a mold screen. And I don't know, admittedly, who made this. This has kind of stopped me. I've done a lot of research. And the only thing that I can find is that this shape is very similar to Ellie Smith. So I'm assuming that this is Ellie Smith, but I can't swear to it. And it has these really cool Art Deco lines going on the bowl. It measures seven inches across. So it's a nice-sized bowl. You could put your TV remotes in it. On a table, this would be really fabulous with napkins or fruit, whatever you want to do with this bowl. It is really nice. It's heavy, but it's not overly heavy, so it won't cost a fortune to ship. And it's just beautiful. No issues whatsoever. An absolutely fabulous condition. Really cool if you like the Art Deco style. And you can have this potentially Ellie Smith bowl for only $15 by giving me number 41. $15, number 41, for the Art Deco Bowl. Okay, so the next item I have is a green uh, vase or vase, if you would like to be fancy. And it's <laughs> got a beautiful um, sort of like cornucopia type shape to it. It's a beautiful light green color. And I think it would pair well with, you know, jadeite or something like that. It's kind of got that color -y to it, but it's got... Um, sort of like a lustery glaze. I don't know if you guys can tell there, a little bit there. Um, you can see the lustery glaze, and then it's got uh, gold accents there. So it does, it doesn't say the maker on the bottom, but it does say warranted uh, 22, 22 karat gold USA. So it does say that on the bottom. Um, there are no chips or cracks, but, um, well, I say, I say that, but there are no chips or cracks. Um, post uh, manufacturing so this thing here unless someone had put it on themselves but it's it looks like it was like a little uh like cracked off but then put on but then there's glaze over top so i'm not sure when that happened um whether it was dur during manufacturing or not but anyway there is that there just a note um, but you know, if you hold, if you have it this way, you would never know. So, um, this is, I don't know, I'd say about maybe six inches tall and I'm asking $12 for this vase or vase. And, uh, the number is going to be number three. So number three for the vase. Congratulations to Shirley Pearl for picking up uh, number 80, which was the pink uh, glass flared vase. So thank you. Uh, and congrats Shirley for picking that up. Uh, the next item, uh, once again, it's five o'clock somewhere or beyond. So we're going to throw in some additional uh, adult beverage time. This is a pair. I actually have two. I'm not selling them as a pair. I'm going to sell them individually. So this will be one of the cases where the first two people that claim. So this is more an announcement for Nate because he didn't know this. Um, so if anyone's interested, you'll be able, two people will be able to claim. They are both identical. They are both in, have an impressed mark in the bottom that says Germany. But as I tried to research the rest of this, you can see there's a little triangle that looks like there's a D and a B in it. I tried to do a bunch of combinations. There's a 383. Tried searching all these different things. The style is Gertz uh, of Germany. It is made in Germany, but I can't swear that this is a Gertz piece. It's an older piece. Um, I believe, according to George, I watched one of his videos and he said, if it does not have the pewter cover, 
then it is not a Stein. It is a tankard. Okay. I've not heard that before. Um, I thought if they were taller, they were Stein. If they were lower, they were tankard. So, you know, you guys can, I, I, but I am not going to question George because mm -hmm. he knows everything. So anyway, so whether you call this a stankard or stankard, well, there we go. There's our new name. Uh, whether it's a Stein or a tankard, whatever you want to call it, it has three individual designs on it. It's got a very, very, very deep blue background, which is coming pretty, it's at least on my screen, it's coming out pretty true to color uh, with the uh, trumpeter on one side. Uh, we're all into our music. So we've got another trumpeter on a on horseback. And then they, I guess they are trumpeting to the lady who is waving her handkerchief. So, you know, that style would probably be you know, he's got the Cavalier boots on, you know, we're probably 16th century of in look, but obviously not a 16th century stankard, which I don't think that's going to catch on. But anyway, uh, they are both in perfect condition. I'm just selling them separately because they are on the high end of uh, German Steins. Um, so they do uh, looked at what others of this style with these similar markings, nobody knows what they are. They also, the closest we again is say they're Gertz. Um, but whatever they are, they're absolutely gorgeous. One Stein is available to you for $20. If you want to just enter the number twice. So the first two people that claim this number, each will get one of these Steins. $20 for one Stein by giving me number 97. $20, 97 for the, an individual Stein. Okay. I have for my next item, a route really large. I think it's large. It is a uh, crocheted jersey. It is like a flower pattern, so kind of round, but you can see that it dips in and out um, for the pet areas there. It has a great center in the middle, tight knit there, tight crochet, tight, tight stitched rather. Um, and it is actually 16 inches across. So it is uh, relatively large and it's that beautiful, almost like a beige -ish color. Um, and I thought that would be really pretty just anywhere with any type of coloring over it. Um, it makes it really pretty and very dainty. Um, and this round doily that is 16 inches across is $10 number 57. $10 number 57 for the doily. Well, congratulations and thank you to Brooke Lahan. You are getting my Art Deco bowl, so congratulations there. Now, the next item that I have for you is fun. I really think people will like this. Now, I love uh, doing Christmas crafts. I always think that's fun to get together and make some fun things with your family, your kids, or just if you love vignettes and little assemblages. This item is for you. I have a whole lot of cool vintage Christmas goodies. So if you're making a wreath like Michael Todd, you can, can get these. I have a whole bunch of little miniature shiny brights for you. They are most shiny bright, made in USA. I have a blue one. All these mercury glass balls are so fabulous. Now, this one has some issues, but they can be cleaned. Uh, some of these are a little bit worn, but that adds to the fun. So you've got a gold and a pink one. And then you get two other pink ones in the lot. There's a little bit of paint wear, you know, paint loss, but not a big deal. And then you get a large shiny bright. Now, this one is missing its top, but I am going to find the top because I've got a lot of tops. And this is a fun kind of blue, silvery, mercury glass piece. Now, you are also going to be getting a whole bunch of miniature flock animals. Now, these are fun. Now, some of the flocking admittedly is coming off, but that's something that could be easily fixed. Or if you do these in an assemblage, you'll never see it. So you're going to get this cute little mouse. He is flocked. And he has the gingham ears. Fun little bow tie there. He's fabulous. Already with his hanger. He is missing some of his flocking there. I also have a flocked bird, a little dove. And he's got all of his uh, gold sparkly glitter. I love that. Now, of course, he's been glued or uh, put on to something because he's missing some flocking there. But again, when you have that glued down in an assemblage, no one will ever notice that. You also have this wonderful little horse. He's fabulous. Someone has put some pipe cleaner 
on him. Now he is missing flocking there, but you could color that in or just turn him around. You know, for a display, that doesn't really matter. And look at this little guy that's over there. He is flocked and he has this fun plastic uh, Christmas greenery that we all love. Love the Holly and Barry there. And he's got the hangers. So I love him. He is awesome. He's only missing a little flocking right on his little uh, hand there, but he's in great shape. And then you get a Japan miniature Santa. And yes, he is flocked. Look at him. Now he is little. These guys are only, let's see, he's about one and a half inches tall. He has the fabulous blue eye shadow there already for Christmas. He's not really a dancing Santa, but he kind of is. He's got a little wear on the back, but nothing too bad. All of his blocking is intact. Look at him. Then, more to come, yes, you're also getting a bunch of jingle bells. These are Eagle Jingle Bells, 37 cents. You are going to be getting four cards of Jingle Bells, uh, four cards. Some of the Jingle Bells have come off and they're loose in the bag, but all the Jingle Bells are there. So you are getting all of the Jingle Bells on the original cards. And last but not least in the slot, you will be getting a pair of Holly Berry clip-on earrings in gold. That will be part of the slot. So you can have this entire lot. With the adorable little cross fellas for only eight dollars, eight dollars by giving me number thirty-eight. Eight dollars for the Christmas cross block. That's a great price. Okay, so what do I have next? I should have had this prepared. Okay, so the next thing I have is, is fun. <laughs> it is a mystery box. So um, I don't have anything to show you because I haven't made this mystery box up. Um, part of the fun is sort of finding out who it's for and trying to curate it for them. Although, um, if I don't know you that well, that's sort of hard. But um, I have fun curating them anyway. So I, I am offering a mystery box. And um, the price is going to be $15. It doesn't include shipping. But I try not to make your mystery boxes um, too heavy or too large so that the shipping is crazy. It is coming from Canada. Um, but, um, you know, no one's complained before about, um, shipping prices, uh, for my mystery boxes. So just, just know that, but, um, so it's $15, uh, us for this mystery box and the mystery box number is going to be, uh, number five. So number five for the mystery box from the collection vintage. So no takers on my stankard. I think maybe the name just scared people away. <laughs> But uh, so it is added to my non-sale, what I didn't sell. So it's behind me. So if anyone comes in late, those are the items that are available. Uh, next item, again, these are items that are coming out of my booth. Uh, this time I decided to pull uh, several small items and make another small lot. Uh, these are some uh, salt and pepper shakers that I had in the lot in, our, in my uh, booth. They were, all of them were originally marked in the booth for $5. Uh, so this is a pair, uh, like a little... They're like little bags. You, know, you can see they're kind of cinched with rope, but then they also have rope handles on them and they're very small scale, you know, so they're only a couple of inches tall. You know, both of them are fitting into my hand. Uh, so they're just very sweet with these little hand painted floral uh, motifs on the side. And then they actually, you can tell that they're pear because they actually say salt and pepper. So they've got white ground with the yellow rope style uh, tie and handle. Uh, this one has its cork precariously set so good luck getting it out uh and then this one also has a very flush mounted cork so they do have their cork stoppers but they're going to be tough to remove so that might be for display uh next is getting into uh scott the uh, old, old curiosity shop his fancy pants um uh, showcase these are porcelain uh you can see the design a scalloped bottom one has its cork one does not they are marked uh, Prussia, so they do have some age. They are Erdman, uh, Schlig, something. My eyes are going, uh, but it does say Prussia there on the bottom. So these are definitely antique pieces. They're very, very pale green at the bottom. It's kind of showing beige, but that's like a really, really pale green. And then it's, it kind of does an ombre effect up to the top, which has almost, it's more of a bluish gray uh, up at the top. They're in excellent condition. 
uh, there's a little bit of wear of the gold. You can see they once upon a time had gold all the way around the rim. So there's a little bit of wear. So we've got those. And then the cute ones, uh, we've got the covered wagon, um, salt and pepper shakers. These have replacement stoppers. They have the uh, plastic, but they are stamped Japan. You can see on the bottom of one of the wheels. So these are also in great condition, the brown on the bottom, and then the, um, and you've got the two and the three holes. They're not marked which ones are salt, which one's pepper. So you know, knock yourself out which ones you use. So they were all $5 each. So it would have been 15 bucks in the booth. Instead, I'm selling them for $3 each. So you get the set of three. Uh, yeah, Patrick needs cheaters. They're, they're right here. I just hadn't put them on. Um, so $9 for the set of three, uh, $9. And that's by giving me number 78. $9.78 for this, this lot of three sets of salt and pepper shakers. Okay. My next item is a dar tray. We all like the dar trays. And this one is kind of larger than the ones that I've had before. This one is 10 and a half inches um, in diameter there. And it's pretty deep. I mean, it's, it's probably a good two inches deep. I originally picked this up because I was going to use it to make a part of a tiered tray. Um, I don't have a tiered tray and I've been doing a lot of the tiered trade collaborations lately. And I just thought that it would be a great fit for all parts of the year, all seasons um, to use this to make a tiered tray, but it could also be a fruit bowl or whatever else that you would like to use it for. This dar, the, this dar bowl, is $12 and it is number 70. Congratulations and thank you to Karen Radford. You are getting the fabulous Christmas craft lot. And now I have another piece that's after my own heart. I love miniature things and of course I adore advertising. And my mom found one of these for me for Christmas. And then guess what? I found another one to share with you guys. So I'm very excited about this. This is a little Watkins corn salve tin in the box. It, the box does have a little wear at the top. It's missing uh, part of the box, but with these paper boxes, you just don't see them in this good a shape. I mean, even though it's missing its top, the bottoms are usually curved. So it's pretty nice to find these in the box. This is Watkins corn salve by the J.R. Watkins company. There is no zip code, so This is definitely before 1963. It has uh, directions on the back. This is three and a quarter ounces, small little tiny container. It measures about uh, one and a half inches in size. So it's a nice small size. Love that red and yellow color. The really fabulous graphics. It says directions, put a small quantity of Watkins corn salve in the whole of Watkins corn pad. And then the directions go on. So really fun little piece. And you can have this great piece of advertising in the box for only $7. The Watkins Corn Salve 10 by giving me number 40. $7, number 40. So the mystery box um, goes to Maria from Empty Nesting 2. So congratulations, Maria. Uh, the next item I have is not a vintage item, I believe. I'm not really sure, um, to be honest, when it's from. Hard to, hard to figure that out. But anyway, it is this dog planter here. So um, it is by the artist Nina Lyman. And there's her little stamp there on the bottom. It says dogs by Nina with a little um, puppy there with the bow. But anyway, that's just the marking, which I thought was cute. But anyway, it's this uh, planter here. So, or vase here. Um, or holder of something here, <laughs> whatever you want to put in there, or you can just put it like this um, for a display. But it's it's beautiful in that it is like an illustration that she's then put onto a piece of uh, ceramic art. So, oh, there's a little thing at the back there that says Dogs by Nina. Um, so it's in excellent condition. Uh, there are no cracks, but there is a tiny chip um, right here. If you can see that there. There's a little tiny chip, but it goes, it's like the paint has just chipped off. Um, it's not a deep gouge or anything like that. And it kind of matches with the white on there. So you can either, either leave it as is, or you can, you know, find a little black coloring somehow and uh, touch it up yourself if you want. So it's a pretty uh, decent size, but it's fairly light. So it will be easy to ship. 
Um, I'm asking $16 for this piece here. And the number for that is going to be number seven. So number seven for $16. He's a cutie. That was a good price too. Uh, all right. So number 78, uh, my last item, the salt and pepper shaker lot went to Diane McIntosh. So thank you, Diane, for picking that up and congratulations. Uh, we are, I'm going to be showing this item and then we will have one round left for all of the resellers. So uh, I've got one and then each of us will have one more. So uh, as I pass it on to the next people, uh, next person, each of, I told each of the resellers they could highlight one or two items that maybe didn't sell. So those of you who joined us late, you might have a chance to pick up some items that were shown early. Uh, so finishing uh, the penultimate round is my piece of Korok upside down frogs. So we've got a Korok bowl, which has an image of a pair of frogs linked in arms. Uh, if you're not familiar with Korok, it's uh, was started in, I think, 1963, if I remember correctly. It was like late mid-century modern. It might have been the very end of the 50s. Um, but what these all are done is it's a, a phenolic resin. It, they're always made in black, so the, the, the look is always very uniform. But the images that they do are inlaid. So the, the beige parts of those frogs are actually wood. Um, I do not know what the green is. Uh, Croc serving pieces are cherished gifts because of the variety and beauty of designs. Hand inlaid by master craftsmen, the shells, coins, woods, and metals are fused into satin black phenolic. They're impervious to alcohol and boiling water, washed with mild soap and water. And they are uh, marked Korok, Monterey, California. Uh, I've got several of these pieces. I had the booth that I had already shut down. I had like 20 pieces, several of them sold. Some I moved on to Etsy and this is just one that I never re-tagged for my booth and never, they're difficult to photograph for Etsy because of that shine in the uh, resin. So I'm selling it here. So it was once upon a time, it was $20 in my booth, but I'm selling it here for 14. So $14 for the pair of frogs and is a, a shallow bowl, uh, but for the $14 for the uh, pair of frogs, number 99, $14.99 for the Kurok uh, bowl. Okay, so I'm gonna show my last item and then two items that didn't sell tonight. Is that okay, Patrick? Yep. Okay. So since I did dogs, it's only fair that I do cats as well. And I have what some people call a soup or a chili bowl. I personally call it an ice cream bowl because I don't like soup or chili. Um, but it says, yes, I'm perfect. And it has a cat on it. Same graphic all the way around. It's just your typical um, bowl for chili or soup or stew or anything like that. And it is $4 and it is number 60, $4 number 60 for that bowl. Um, two items that didn't sell were the 1976 first printing of the hors d'oeuvres cookbook. That was $6 and number 71, $6 number 71 for the hors d'oeuvres cookbook. And then I'm going to show my uranium plates one more time just because I love them. And um, I have two eight inch dinner plates here with that tiara uh, pattern, tiara glass pattern on there. Very intricate. There are two plates in the set. And for the set of two plates, it is $18. And the number for the uranium plates was 63 for $18 for the two. Thank you so much. All righty, congratulations to Brooke Lagan. You got that corn now 10. And my next item for you guys is a beautiful piece of whole pottery. This is Crestone. It is the pattern, Crestone. Wonderful berry bowl. I love this brown color. I just think it is so gorgeous. It will fit into anybody's display or house because its color is so neutral, but it's just really lovely. There's no issues, chips, or cracks with this. It is marked whole USA, Crestone oven proof. Wonderful little berry bowl. Now, it measures in size to be about, let's see, six inches across, so it's a berry bowl size. You can have your yogurt out of this in the morning, do whatever you'd like, put it in a display, do an assemblage, really, really fun piece. And you can have this berry bowl for only $7 by giving me the number 
35. $7, number 35 for the whole berry bowl. And I also have one more item to share with you guys. I didn't have anything that didn't sell. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just share one more item with you and then I'll pass it on. Thank you so much, Patrick, for having me. This was a lot of fun. So if you guys would like a vintage and vinyl sticker, you can have a vintage and vinyl sticker. I have uh, some with the rounded edge and some with the square edge. It will be sort of at random which one you get. But you can have your very own vintage and vinyl sticker. I have a 10 available. I'm so sorry, Nate. This is becoming like the maxi pads. But 10 available by giving me number 45. And they are $5 each for the vintage and vinyl stickers. All right, back to you guys. Okay, I'm going to show um, one last item here. And um, it is a pair of kitties, very sweet little kitties. They are made in Taiwan. They're quite tiny, just, you know, shorter than my finger. And um, this one here has a little winking eye. I don't know if it's blurry for you guys, but she has a little winking eye there and uh, holding a pink flower. And then this one here has eyes open with a blue flower. So very sweet little pair there. Uh, they're very uh, lightweight little porcelain made in Taiwan. I'm asking $10 for the pair and the number is number 13. And then I'll just show one last thing here that didn't sell. Um, and it is this uh, Horner's tin here, very rusty and crusty and dusty as uh, Michael Todd and Katie say. Um, so very pretty tin here. I just love the vibrant colors there. She's got a pretty little face with a bright red dress there. Very nice. And um, for that one, I was asking, I think, yeah, $16. And the number was number six for this tin. So that's all I have. All right. Well, I had the items that I didn't sell have been sitting behind me the whole time because, you know, I cheated. So I've got a ledge and that's what <laughs> didn't sell. So you've got the collection of bottles, the stankard and the gross beak. So I've just got a bunch of weird things uh, with weird names, but uh, those are all still available. My last item is my last batch of uh, last piece of ephemera. Uh, I've had these in and out of uh, several sales in the past. Again, if you're familiar with my channel, I actually started reselling as a result of doing community theater primarily acting, but I also do uh, stage uh, set dressing and props. And so over the years, I just collected this these different um, playbills. So these are all Broadway playbills. And the way I group these together is they are all from the 100th, uh, the centennial edition of uh, playbills. So these are all from 1984. So all of them are from the centennial uh, edition of playbill. You've got The Rink, which was a Candor and Ebb flop. Uh, you've got Torch Song Trilogy, which is a play. Uh, Le Cage au Faux, which is a musical. Uh, My One and Only, which is a musical at St. James Theater. And then 42nd Street musical at the Majestic. So you know, before Phantom of the Opera basically moved in and parked there, um, there were actually other shows. So all of them are big into smoking. Uh, so they all of these have Carlton on the back of them because they're all from the same era, but you'll have additional ads in the middle, Lancome, you know, so again, it's a, it's a snapshot of New York living in 1984, and it's kind of special that they're all from the centennial uh, anniversary of Playbill as an organization. So it is one, two, three, four, five vintage Playbills. You get the set of five for $10 by giving me number 85. $10, number 85 for the batch of five vintage playbills. So I wanna bring everybody back on the screen and thank uh, all of you for joining me. Uh, definitely special thanks to Katie and to Aaron and to Beth for participating in another 4S1S. I hadn't had one uh, since, I might have had one in December but as the holidays were approaching, it was getting difficult to schedule things. So I haven't had one in a while. So it was great to have people um, to start scheduling them again. I gave special uh, dispensation to those individuals, all three of them here on the screen, who participated in the Just One More Dachshund Rescue fundraiser. They all donated mystery boxes. And as a result of helping me with that fundraiser, they all had the opportunity to do a group sale with me. So, uh, so I appreciate them jumping in and doing the first one. 
Um, I will say, if we all need to announce our last winners, my last one that Playbill Lot went to Tiger Purple. Did anybody else have anything they hadn't announced yet? I forgot to say thank you to Connie CLC. I think it's Connie, if I'm not mistaken, that got the puppy dog planner. And uh, I have uh, several people for the stickers. I have Karen Dondelinger, Brooke Lagan, Donna DeMama60, Natty and Suzuko had emailed me the other day. And so I already have you Suzuko for a sticker. So fantastic and thank you all so very much. And uh, for the little pair of kitties there that I showed at the end, I have Debbie from Our Vagabond Travels. So thank you, Debbie. And then showing the Horner tin again, I have um, Suzuko, so thank you. Excellent. So I was trying to keep everything to within about two hours. We went a little bit over, but that's okay. Uh, Angela Marksbury will be doing a live unboxing on her channel of her mystery box from Fatbird Finds. I didn't see Kim on the channel tonight, but if you're not following Oh My Vintage, uh, and Dawn is here. She's the founder of the Just One More Doxid Rescue. Um, she, Kim from Oh My Vintage, she's the one that won 35 mystery boxes. So if you've not been following Kim at Oh My Vintage, she's been doing uh, uh, videos of her unboxing her, her win. Uh, so, so far, I think she's only opened 20 or 25 of them. So she's still got a few left to go, uh, including mine, actually. But um, yes, yeah, so that's for the Docs and Rescue. So again, thank you all for, as Dawn is offering, thanks for supporting the rescue. Uh, so I do appreciate that. And thanks for joining my sale. Thanks for all of you for sticking around and hanging out for the sale. Hope you had fun. Uh, thanks for your time. And thanks for putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. Everybody have a great night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.